Bismillah. He is the benevolent, the giving and merciful. He's so indescribable. His love is irreversible. Word undeniable. Lyrically untriable. Ultimately viable. Eternally suppliable. Maybe inconceivable, but beautifully believable. The true reality. There's no similarity. Gave us more than charity, peace and prosperity. Why did we never care to see it? We could keep its clarity. The Almighty, the Father, metaphorically, but in the history they tried to make his word a mystery. Gave a mortality and the promorphic value. Say he's got a seed, they can never bring the proof to me And honestly, the greatest, the best beyond time and space Beyond matter and flesh, yes, he's uncomparable Yet his parables, infinitely listed pictures Couldn't give a good description, the pictures missing But he created all the living in every dimension And he inspired what I'm giving, the giver of wisdom Devoid of any needs, anything that he want All he has to say is be, cause he's the untouchable Infinitely trustable, his plan unstoppable, power un Untoppable, the reliable, undeniable, greater than the physical, master of the mystical, the master of the worlds, the fashioner of seas, the crafter of the universe, the atoms to the bees. He is love, he is truth, he is light, he is one, he is king almighty. All credit, all glory, all praise goes to the one whose name is. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam, sir. And Ramadan Mubarak, ma'am. Ramadan Kareem. Praises be to Allah. Let us open in prayer. A'uzu billahi min shaitan rajim. Say, I seek refuge in Allah against the accursed Satan. Bismillahir Rahman Rahim. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful. All praise is due to Allah, the Lord of the worlds, the beneficent, the merciful, master of the day of judgment in which we now live. Thee alone do we serve. Thee alone do we beseech for help. Guide us on the right path, the path you bestowed your favors upon, and not the path you brought your wrath down upon, nor those who go on astray after hearing thy teachings. Amen. Are you on mute, my sister? You on mute. Praise be to Allah. Praise be to Allah. We can hear you now. And, and, yes. let the, and they said he is the all hearing. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so welcome to season three, episode 14. Can you believe 14? Yeah, 14. 14. 14 of the 99 attributes of Allah in 30 days, where we take three to four attributes per day and go into their meaning and their usage in our environment. And this year's theme is living by the book attributes in action. And Allah says in the Holy Quran, Allah, there is no God except he. To him are the most beautiful names. And believers, these beautiful names are the 99 attributes of Allah. And the 99 characteristics of Allah reflect the noblest of qualities and abilities. They represent the perfect ideal for human beings to inspire to. Islamic tradition says, derive your manners, from the attributes of Allah. And therefore, brothers and sisters, our beloved prophet, peace be upon him, said, cultivate within yourselves the attributes of Allah. And our minister, the honorable minister, Louis Farquhar, tweeted, when you have an attribute of God, you should strive for degrees of excellence in that attribute. Praise be to Allah. And so again, this year's theme is living by the book, attributes in action. And we have to give Almighty Allah thanks for Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, for being a man who manifested that holy Quran, that book. But we also give thanks to Allah for Master Fahd Muhammad, for the most honorable Elijah Muhammad and the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan, who are the books as well. And so we'll be watching a clip of the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan from the time and what must be done. And he tells us about Master Fahd Muhammad, the Mahdi, the great Mahdi. And he tells us that he is the manifestation of all of the attributes, plus some. Let's watch the clip. As we have been sharing with you in these broadcasts of the time and what must be done, the representation of the great Mahdi, or long-looked-for guide of the Muslim world, 
Master Farad Muhammad, who is the master of the wheel, and the great Jesus, the Christ. The Christ and the Mahdi are one and the same. For Christ means one anointed with power to crush the wicked. And the Mahdi is one also anointed to set justice in the earth and to set down every tyrant. And we are saying that in our humble judgment, he, the Mahdi, the Christ, is so magnificent. There has never been a manifestation of God like him. And when the Quran says in the 112th surah or chapter, and there is none like him, never has there been one like him who is the master of that great mother plane or wheel. He is the manifestation of all of the 99 attributes of Allah plus a few more. As Allah is always coupling his attributes in this manner, he's mighty, but he's wise. He's strong and powerful, but he's the forgiving and the merciful. He is the avenger and the destroyer, but his power is always balanced with his oft returning to mercy and his forgiveness. He's always balanced. We would have to do something so terrible that would allow him to unleash the fullness of the power that he has. Man, what a mighty God. That's right. You know, that we serve. So we say praise be to Allah for his coming to us in the person of Master Fahd Muhammad. We thank him for raising up the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And we thank them both for the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. And we thank all three of them for all of us. <laughs> so, so when we think about, when we think about now putting those attributes to action, ourselves, and the Honorable Minister with Farrakhan said in this next clip, if we can use 95 to 99% of our mental capacity, who would we be and how would we perform? Let's watch this clip. And if you could use 95 to 99% of your mental capacity, then you would be a reflection of God himself. Yes. This is why we as Muslims can wear the names or the attributes yes. of God. Because we are born to reflect yes. him. Yes. The beneficent. Yes. The merciful. Rub yes. mm. the Lord, the nourisher, the sustainer, the evolver. Yeah. We all have that power to bring a thing into existence and nurture it until it reaches perfection. Yes, sir. God made us like himself. You got the power of life and the power of death. Praises be, praises be to Allah. Brothers and sisters, and that's and that's the whole point of why we wanted to have this program. And I'm so glad that someone sent me uh, that particular clip because now we can begin to look at ourselves and how we manifest those attributes in our personal lives. So, Sister Dia, who do we have with us today? Okay, this is me, Sabrina. 
my niece, right? <laughs> we affectionately, she affectionately calls me Tia and, and she is Sabrina. Um, but she's a beautiful sister out of Waxahachie study group. And her and her family are just a great examples of a family who really strive and loves these teachings. Mm -hmm. She's a part of Sister Naima's team of the I Deny crew um, where they campaign and give, you know, lectures, talks, and encouragement on, you know, our modesty and our virtue and how important it is and to save ourselves for marriage. She's an example of a mighty, mighty vanguard. And she's a very spiritually inclined sister as well. Uh, Brother Aleem, I know this is, this is your Sabrina as well. So I <laughs> yes, indeed. They're my peeps. Oh, yes. oh, this is absolutely, and as, as you stated, this is absolutely our family. You know, we love um, this group dearly. We love her, her parents, her, her siblings, um, just, just the whole crew and just the great work uh, that they're doing down in Waxahachie for the Honorable Minister with Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam and raising up that particular city and the surrounding area. So we give a big Allahu Akbar for the work that they're doing and the excitement yeah. that goes along with going after the people of God. And you see them every, every, I would say every day, you know, <laughs> posting um, that they have someone new to come out, you know, what they do every year for Savior's Day. They find people in uh, the Detroit area. They invite them out to Savior's Day. They bring them to Savior's Day. You know, so they completed their Savior's Day gift this year. So when you want to know what blessings look like, you know, so they are demonstrating what the Honorable Mr. Lord Farquhar talked about when he talked about the definition of mubarak, right? That that ever flowing blessing. It's like a water fountain that just keep on giving. And you know why they keep on giving is because they are allowing their cups to run over and Allah just keep putting more in it, more in it. And they just keep giving and keep giving and keep giving. Sabrina! Assalamu alaikum. salam. How are you? Alhamdulillah, Rabbi Alameen. And we from 99 to 1, we want to thank you uh, for accepting the invitation and coming on to be with us today. Wow, all praise due to Allah. What an introduction. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> All praise is due to Allah. It's an honor to be here and be in your presence. And I pray that your Ramadan is going well. Absolutely. Yes. As I mentioned, this is mi familia, mi tia, mi tio. So I may call them that during this, this uh, broadcast. So I just want to put that out there. And I would like to also thank you both for all the hard work and sacrifices you've been putting in to make season three possible. And on that note, congratulations on making another season. I know you put in a lot of hard work and sacrifice for that. So thank you both for that. Oh, thank you. Absolutely. Praises be to Allah. Yes, Praises yes, sir. And one of the things I really love about this broadcast, this, uh, this, uh, oh my gosh, <laughs> this broadcast, is it season broadcast? How should I say? Podcast, broadcast, platforms. Yes. Podcast. We're all, we all over the place. Trying yeah. to get my booster seat right, y'all. I mean, <laughs> your booster seat. Stop saying that. Stop saying that. I can't. Hey, I can't. I can't see y'all. We gonna do that off camera, sir. I know. Just. <laughs> but I, I love that in participating in Ramadan, like myself, whoever participating in Ramadan, I love that we have an outlet to tune into and not just to receive spiritual food, but. It also helps to pass, you know, by the time for our physical food, iftar. So all praise is due to Allah for that. And on that note, I know that iftar is like in a few hours. So I'll go ahead and get started. <laughs> in, in the name of Allah, the beneficent, the most merciful, I bear witness that there is no God but Allah and that Muhammad is indeed his messenger. I would like to greet my brothers and sisters in the greeting words of peace as we say in the Arabic language, Assalamu alaikum and Ramadan Mubarak. Wa alaikum salam and Ramadan kareem. I first want to thank Allah for the most honorable Elijah Muhammad and honorable minister Louis Farrakhan. It's because of their unconditional love that I can be here today and I can never thank Allah enough for the parents he gifted me with 
Brother Malik and Sister Sheree Muhammad. It's because of their names that I mentioned that I even have a foundation to stand on today. It's because of them that I can be here and share words and dialogue with you all. So all praise is due to Allah. And thank you so, so much again, me, Theo and Thea, for inviting me and Sister Aliyah, everyone who had a hand to play in helping to make the production of season three possible. Thank you all so much. And again, I'm so humbled to be asked to speak on four attributes of Allah. And the attributes that I was given to speak on are Al-Qudus, meaning the absolute pure, Al-Mukmin, meaning the one who gives faith and security, Al-Jabir, which means to compel, the compeller, the restorer, and Al-Haq, meaning the absolute truth. And for the, the theme of the season, like Sister Sadia mentioned, is living by the book, explaining how we use each attribute in our daily lives. And when Mithio, when Mithio, Brother Aline texted me the theme, I was so happy to read that the theme was about practical application because honestly, now more than ever, we all should be found striving, not necessarily just to speak about the teachings, but we should be found striving to the best of our ability to apply these teachings, these life-giving teachings in every area of our lives. And in the Bible, the book of John, it talks about how in the beginning was the word, but then the word ultimately became flesh. And after hearing the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan deliver this Savior's Day address, I think we can all agree that this time, now more than ever, we should be applying these teachings in our lives. So I said all that to say, I'm happy that the theme of, about the theme of this show. And I was talking with my father, Brother Malik, about the attributes Al-Qudus, Al-Mukmin, Al-Jabir, and Al-Haq. And he shared with me some great insight regarding these attributes. Honestly, I never would have thought of it that way. So I definitely have to share some of that. And let me back up. For those who may not know, if you can't already tell, I am definitely a daddy's girl. My family, particularly my parents, they're very much so actively involved in my life and vice versa. And I thank a lot for that relationship. He, he blessed me to have with them because I truly believe that they are a key to unlocking the greatness that God put within me because in us, because God showed me and everyone for that matter that we need someone to help us grow and develop in life. We we can't do this on our own or totally by ourselves. And if that was the case, God wouldn't have blessed us with parents. So I said all that to say, please, let's not take our parents for granted. No matter what they may have done, never judge them. God put something within our parents for us to extract, to help us to grow and then vice versa. But we can't do that without communicating with them. So I digress a little bit, but let me go back to the attributes Al-Qudus, al muqmin Al-Jabir, and Al-Haq. So I was speaking to my father about the attributes, and he shared with me how those four attributes are connected in a way to four of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan's lectures to the world, which is the Swan Song, the Criterion, the War of Armageddon has begun, up to his most recent Savior's Day Address title, What Does Allah, the Great Mahdi and Great Messiah, Have to Say About the War in the Middle East? So how exactly are these lectures connected to the attributes? Well, the first attribute, al kodos which again means the absolute pure, and to be pure means to be clear of any imperfections, weaknesses, or shortcomings. To be purified means to cleanse, to rid of foreign or unwanted elements, to be free from guilt, sin, or defilement, and to become pure or clean. So al kodos the absolute pure, is definitely connected to the Swan Song lecture. Within that lecture, many thought that that was the minister's Swan Song, or last time speaking to the public, rather, but in that lecture, the minister said that it was our swan song. He also said, we sin like we breathe. We sin and love it, and that's why we keep going back. So I'm singing a swan song, the minister speaking, not me, <laughs> because the God that is on scene today is a God of truth and righteousness. And if you play a game with God, he will leave you where you are. So in that lecture, the minister was telling us to examine our actions and strive to purify ourselves purify our moral compass, our character, and just be serious in our commitment to God. And I'm not sure about everyone else, but that sounds a lot like al the absolute pure. And of course, he doesn't just speak on it, but he is also a great example in our midst of what al the absolute pure, looks like. The minister, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said, and has said in many lectures, that he didn't fall out of the sky. He came up just like us. I remember hearing him say in a lecture that at one of his first mosque meetings he attended, he came to the meeting with a joint in his hat band. And then in another lecture, I remember him sharing with us that when the most honorable Elijah Muhammad departed, he began to lose his faith. He let his hair grow long and he started smoking cigars in that period of time. But why is the minister sharing this with us? 
he's trying to help us to see and understand that he didn't just start off pure. And even with all his impurities, because he is connected and submitting to a law God who is perfect and through his submission to God, he's being purified right before our eyes. We're witnessing al like right in front of us. So throughout the years, we saw the Honorable Minister Lewis Farrakhan stages of growth and development from him talking about he smoked cigars to him losing his faith. Fast forward to now, 2024, he is 90 years young, the Messiah, and he stands as the absolute pure. And he's trying to show us that we too can do the same. And the Honorable Minister Lewis Farrakhan understands that we are this way by circumstance, but it's not who we truly are. And if we were left alone, untampered by the wickedness of this world, we would be righteous. We would be our righteous selves. So how can we practically apply this attribute, alquibus, the absolute pure in our daily lives? The answer would be following the same process as the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan by striving to submit our will to do the will of God. Okay, now this is a very important part. Not just submit our will to God in the manner of like, oh, okay, I'll do it, you know, this, you know, my mom told me or this, this, they, they told me to do this. So I'm going to do it. No, not in that manner. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan does it with the intent of handling himself in a manner that's pleasing to God and for the will of God to be done. So we have to first have the desire and want to submit to do his will, which trust me is a big, big difference. And you're probably wondering, OK, that's great, Sister Mir, but what should I physically be doing? Well, if we're striving to be purified, one of the first things we should do is remove ourselves from the situation or stop participating in doing things that are making us impure. It's similar to cleaning dirty clothes. That's the first step. What's the first step to cleaning our clothes that's dirty? We don't put them back in the filth that caused them to become dirty, right? I would hope not. <laughs> but if you have dirty clothes that need to be cleaned, we remove the clothes from the place that made it dirty and put it into the washing machine. Okay, then what happens? We pour the cleaning agent, we turn on the water, right? Well, then we should pour the cleaning agent and water on ourselves. And I don't literally mean like go run and, you know, pour detergent and water on yourself, not in that manner. But the cleaning agent for ourselves that I'm referring to is the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad as being taught by the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan. And the way we should do that is by feeding on the word of God as much as we can. And as we're learning along the way, we can examine our actions and make the adjustments or cha the changes rather that we need to, to be in line with the will of God. And part of that process, just like the washing machine, part of the cleaning process is agitation. And that's when clothes, now I know I'm not the only one who sometimes like in the old school washing machines, like open it up and you look at it and you see like the clothes getting stirred around and whisked the machine. That's the agitation part. It almost looks like the clothes are being beaten <laughs> in a way. And that's the same thing with us striving to be pure. Once we remove ourselves from the environment and stop participating in the things that we did that made us impure, to turn around and learn that for the most part, everything that we were taught growing up was not the truth. Then after we, then after that, we are ultimately in the valley of decision to decide what path we want to take in life. And so that's where the agitation and fight jihad within ourselves comes in because we're living, we were living our life one way for so long. And now that we're striving to come out of that way of life into the way of God, into the way God intended for us to live, we have to fight with ourselves inter internally. And that's a process, but we can absolutely do it. But don't think like you have to have grace with yourself. Don't think after you learn the next day, you're going to jump right up. You're going to be there. You're going to know you have to gradually do it just like we witnessed in the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. But have a balance to it. Don't have so much grace to where you stop being productive because like, oh, I need to have grace. Just have a healthy balance in that. We are also taught in the nation of Islam that our environment trumps heredity. So surrounding ourselves with like-minded individuals is very important. And honestly, one of my testimonies in regards to al Qudus, which helped me besides my desire to want to be pure and of course me striving to obey God, but it was my family, my father, my mother, and my siblings. God, God, I'm let, let me tell you, God truly thought of everything when everything that we needed when he created the structure for family and not just any not, not any not any structure, but a family who is striving to live the will of God, where the father and the mother are dutiful to God and are operating in their natural roles and the children are doing the same. That is powerful and it produces electrifying energy. And to me, it's like on a smaller scale, waking up every day at Savior's Day, being surrounded by believers. 
For those who may not know, me and my siblings are all active registered members in the Nation of Islam, which makes the moments even more special to me because we're all in the same struggle together, sharing a common goal and purpose in life, which makes our time together even more meaningful. And I'm going to stop right there. And this is a great segue for me to go to the next attribute, which is Al Mukmin, which means having faith and secure. Wait, let me go back. <laughs> Al Mukmin, which means one who gives faith and security. And that connects to the criterion lecture that the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan delivered to the world on July 4th, 2020. The reason why that connects is because the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan stood on his faith in Allah God when he said to the entire world to not take the vaccines. And the minister said that back in 2021. And if we fast forward to now, 2024, there's been several cases of how the vaccine affected the people who took it. And they're finding all kinds of things in the bloodstream of those who took the vaccine. So the minister had to stand on his faith in Allah to warn us. And as a result of that, he came out a winner in the end because right now we are seeing the results of why he warned us back then in 2021 of not to take the vaccine. And in that lecture, he also mentioned other, other great demonstrations of Al Mukmin because he's essentially exercising and standing up in his faith for in Allah. And that in return is building our faith in him, which is ultimately building our faith in God. So even the most powerful government on earth is trying to kill him, yet he stands. So for those who never met the most honorable Elijah Muhammad or Master Fadr Muhammad, because of the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan, we can have faith in those men. He's the evidence, and that's honestly what faith is. He's the evidence that Master Fadr Muhammad is backing him up. And to tie in the security part of al Mukmin, the way that it ties in, is because, like I said, they're the most powerful government on earth, yet they have not been able to silence him, stop the truth from spreading, and prevent the rise of the nation of Islam in the West and around the world. And to add to that, the minister shared with us on many occasions that they attempted to take his life by filling his body with 100 or 180 or more radiated seeds. And they were sure that he would not survive it, but they were unsuccessful. The Honorable Minister, all praise due to Allah. <laughs> the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan stands strong and tall. And we literally witnessed that this Savior's Day, he was standing for nearly hours, all praises due to Allah. And I think we can all agree that the minister is a wonderful example of Al Mukmin, one who gives faith and security. And faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet, things not yet seen. And the way that we can practically apply the principle of Al Mukmin in our daily lives is by trying God by taking a leap of faith through our actions, which, which will ultimately result in us having trust and security in God. Now, the important key part of uh, taking a leap of faith is that the leap that we're taking should be in the direction of God and becoming closer to him. Not taking a leap of faith in the direction of this world or our Lord desires. And what I mean by that is we can't be like, I'm going to go take a leap of faith in God and I'm going to go to the bar tonight. And I'm going to drink the strongest drinks. And I have faith. I have faith that God will strengthen me to drink as many shots as I can. No, that's not the leap of faith or direction in God that I'm referring to. The leap of faith out Mukman that I'm referring to is pushing and challenging ourselves to be uncomfortable and do things that will strengthen our faith in God and grow closer to him. And of course, what we do to exercise our faith in God may look different, but the principle is still the same. For example, exercising our faith, you know, taking a leap of faith in the direction of God could be joining the discussion and speaking at study group. Maybe we were nervous before and you want to take a leap of faith and, you know, try to share something in study group. It could be taking a leap of faith in joining the Nation of Islam. But for me personally, one of the practical ways I execute our mukmin, my faith and security in Allah God is being intentional in how I present myself in this world by covering my hair and body when this world at this time is promoting the exact opposite. That takes faith. And growing up in womanhood in this society, I didn't want to fall victim to the pressures of trends for women in particular, wearing lashes, being thick, that's that's the thing, <laughs> having a caked face of makeup, et cetera. And that's not to talk down or say that there's something wrong with that because we all have a right to decide how we want to live our lives and present ourselves. I personally just truly want to put myself in a position to be admired by Allah. And I'm committed to striving to the best of my ability to actually be an example of what I believe. And so in that process, 
I had to be willing to be disciplined and learn all of what I needed to learn to be that representative. And that takes a lot of faith. But that, but in that, the peace of mind and security that I'm receiving from Allah and striving to live out Mukmin is absolutely priceless because it's pro it's a proactive measure and it protects me from falling victim to the ways of this world. All praise is due to Allah. And this brings me to my third attribute, Al-Jabir, which means the compeller, the restorer. And that connects to the Savage Day 2023 address titled, The War of Armageddon Has Begun. Now, before I go into that particular lecture, I have to say, and I'm sure Theo and Thea, you would also bear witness that the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is always in every lecture compelling us to strive to obey God. And honestly, he compels us to be ourselves. And of course, that looks different for the man and the woman because the male and the female are not alike. We have different roles to play with God. And just chemically speaking, we are in, in completely two different universes. Now, I don't want to go into that because my family knows I'm very passionate about that. So back to Al Jaber and how it's connected to the War of Armageddon, Savage Day 2023 address. Firstly, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is the only one that told us matter of factly that the War of Armageddon has begun. And that's the war against good and evil. So it's, it's not just necessarily the nation of Islam. It's all over the world. And we see what's happening in the Middle East right now. But I'm specifically, for me, since I'm a Black woman in the nation of Islam, I'm going to speak regarding Black people. So al Jaber, the compeller, the restorer. Because of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is compelling us, I'm blessed to be a product of that because he compelled and restored my father and mother. And I remember my father and mother telling me stories of how they grew up. They didn't necessarily know how to eat to live. They didn't grow up in the best environment like that. So I've witnessed, literally witnessed the restoring power of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan through my parents. And I know it works because I've witnessed my parents' restoration and what they're also providing for me and how I'm blessed to live. So it's because of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan compelling us that my mother and father compelled me. And so inshallah, I intend to compel my children in the future. And so I believe that a majority of us to some degree have a testimony to share regarding the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan exuding the attribute al -Jaber, the compeller, the restorer. And to, to compel means bring about something by the use of force or pressure. And to restore something means to repair or return someone or something to a former condition, place, or position. So the way we can practically apply the principle of compelling and benefiting from the restoration of al -Jaber in our daily lives is rooted in what we believe, our will, and our desire. Okay, so I remember my father telling me one day, we were out running errands, and I believe we were headed back home. I'm not quite, I'm not quite sure what made him say this to me, but he told me that at the end of the day, he was looking very seriously in my eyes too. At the end of the day, people are going to do what they want, when they want to do it, and how they want to do it. And I remember him, like, it's not like we had a conversation after this. He just came out and just said that. And I remember some of my thoughts after he shared that with me. I was like, okay. I was thinking, I'm not quite sure why he shared this with me, but okay, yes, sir. And I share, I wanted to share that story to say that what we choose, what we choose to believe in, what our desires are, and what we want to do is a great indication of what kind of compelling force will actually compel us. Because there's a lot of forces out here, but what will actually compel us. And to give an example of what I mean, let's say we grew up protected from the ways of this world from birth to around 18 years of age, right? And for all those years, we were learning how smoking and vaping affect our health. And on top of that, we never smoked a day in our life. Well, growing up that way naturally instills in us a belief system of how smoking and vaping affects our health. So if seeing someone smoking or vaping, advertising, you know, vaping and stuff like that, what are the chances that that force will compel us to want to smoke or vape? Very low, right? So what we choose to believe in and what we want and desire is a great determining factor and plays a role in what certain compelling forces will actually impact or compel and restore us. So one of the ways we can actually begin to practically apply algebra in our daily lives is that we have to have the desire and will to do righteousness and submit our will to do the will of God, which we kind of have a heads up on because we're taught in the nation of Islam that we are righteous by nature. So we all have a self-accusing spirit. And you know, we know what that is. That's that little voice in our head that guides and compels us to righteousness and warns us not to do things that we know we shouldn't be doing. 
So we, we are then practically applying algebra in our daily lives when we act on the word of God, not necessarily speaking, but acting on the word of God through the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad as being taught by the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan. So we have to strive to be in obedience to the law and principles of God. Then we'll begin to see the restoration, but depending on the degree of our submission to God will determine how much restoration we'll receive. And an example of algebra in my personal life is how I carry myself, specifically on social media, how I strive to be in obedience to the restrictive laws we are taught in the nation of Islam in regards to how women should interact with brothers on social media. So the compelling force in this case is the law of how we should interact with brothers in person and on social media, which is besides assalamu alaikum, there's nothing more to talk about. Unless, of course, you're in an official courtship or, you know, you do business together. But even then, there's a structure and manner and how to go about that. Now, that doesn't mean, I have to say this, that does not mean to be mean to brothers. That is not what I'm saying at all. I know some sisters, including myself, in the beginning, I, was, I, I would think to myself, oh, my God, I don't want the brothers to think I'm mean or, you know, that's not my personality. But I had to, I had to put that aside because I know sometimes when we hear the truth, we'll be like, oh no, that's not me. That's my personality. So I'm not good. I don't have to do that. But no, for those who know me, I am a very bubbly person, but that's not, no, that's not an excuse not to obey God. So I came to the realization and grew into the understanding that at the end of the day, any brother can think and will think whatever he may think about me, but that doesn't matter. What matters is what does God think about me? What did God tell me to do? How would he be pleased with how I conducted myself? And so by me striving to be in obedience to God through the compelling force of how we as women should interact with brothers online by not DMing brothers throughout all times of the day and night and not being on the phone with brothers on social media, et cetera. And I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful to Allah for his love and guidance through that particular compelling force because it's truly a protection and preventative measure for us women and men also because we are by nature made to be naturally attracted to men and vice versa, men are naturally attracted to women. And honestly, if you think about it, what would we need to talk about if we're not, what like what we need to talk about if we're not in an official courtship or business partners? What is the motive of us wanting to converse with each other? And don't get me wrong, our motives might be very pure and innocent. Maybe you just genuinely want to converse about the teachings, you know, and pick up pick, pick each other's brains and just talk about the teachings. That's cool, but it's a time and place for that. And for that in particular, we can attend our local mosque or study group and converse about the teachings in that manner. So there's no need to take that type of measure to converse with brothers. And the restoration I'm blessed to receive from being in obedience to the compelling force of God is that I didn't fall victim to the hookup culture that's going on on social media. My emotions, oh my gosh, that's an important one. My emotions are intact and protected because I'm not in relationships with brothers online, et cetera. To sum it up, I have a great peace of mind knowing that Allah is pleased with me in that manner. And I'm gonna stop talking about algebra at this moment because as you can see, I can go on and on. And I know that it's closer time to iftar and I have one more attribute to cover and that is al-haq, meaning the absolute truth. The lecture that comes to mind, uh, it, that connects with it, is honestly any lecture delivered by the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, but in particular, his most recent address to the address to the world titled, What What Does Allah, the Great Mahdi, and the Great Messiah have to say about the war in the Middle East? Now, going back to 1981, when he had his vision-like experience, that vision-like experience that was proved to be true through several presidents, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said he is like a guided missile. So when he says something, even to this most recent Savior's Day address, we heard what he said about what's going on in the Middle East in the beginning of that conflict. And in the past 469 years of slavery, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan right now has the answers. And being a member in the Nation of Islam, I can bear witness that there is nothing that this world has that can defeat the absolute truth that we receive from the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. So I don't worry about this world and its economic conditions. I don't worry about the food and how terrible it is in this world. I don't worry about the dead educational system in this world. And it's because the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is the absolute truth. So because I stand on his word and I strive to obey his word, 
I benefit by escaping all the falsehood that surrounds me. So without question, I can bear witness that through what I've seen and witnessed in my personal life, in my family, that the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is the absolute truth. The way we can benefit from the absolute truth from God himself is by being in obedience to the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad as being taught by the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan. And if you're not sure how to start, you know, please comment below and or DM myself, brother Aleem, sister Sadia, and we would love to help direct you to the nearest mosque or study group that's closest to you. And I will close out with this Q&A from the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan via Facebook. Someone asked him, how can you recognize in your life when you lost God's favor, favor, pardon me, and if you recognize it, how can you return in his favor? The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said, quote, first, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that Allah did not come after us to punish us for our falling into the, sin the sins of our former slave masters and their children. We have not lost his favor, but he is guiding us to his great favor. And the greatest favor of all is that he did not send anyone. He came himself to claim you as his people to claim us as his people. We're already favored. Now go do what is required to gain more of the favor of his divine promise, end quote. So I pray that something was shared that touched the listening audience and whoever listens in the future, that you move closer to God and hopefully leave here more inspired and hopeful and just full of life to do what's right. So I thank you so much again, Theo and Thea for and the rest of the team for having me on today is truly an honor to share those few words. Praise be to Allah. And I'm, I'm listening to you um, and your audiences and, you know, you're talking about um, just our, the purity, the restoration, the being compelling, the truth, but yet you made it um, very relevant to this younger generation. Right. Uh, you talked about the hookup culture and, and how easy it is. Um, social media period, how it's misused right. and how the enemy will use to trick us right. about our virtue and our, our modesty and purity. So practical for you, um, how difficult is it? And I know you're immersed with a family who's in the mission, right. but I, you know, I know that the enemy tries to, you know, snake its way, how difficult or how easy it is and the practical steps that you take on a personal level to guard your chastity, guard your purity, um, to make sure that you are compelled towards the truth and the mission. And, you know, just listening and adhering to this truth on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And I know we only got, what, about eight eight minutes before your next oh. event, Brother um, Ali. I'm sorry. <laughs> he, today's his long day, y'all. Oh, it, oh okay. okay. So personally, for me, like you said, my family is a very big help with that. To answer your question, it's really as hard as we make it, if that makes sense. My mind was made up that I didn't want to be a temptress to men. I didn't want to, to do certain things. So when my mind was made up, that made it that much more easy. But if you're in that stage of uncertainty, it makes it so much more easier for those things to be appealing and pull on you. It's kind of, I, I believe the minister said this. I don't quite remember the quote exactly, but he was talking to his son I don't remember which one and he said there was at the top of a high mountain and he was saying you see how you're sitting up here you can see everything low down there coming your way because you're so up high so what I'm saying by that mentally is that I try not to give into my lower desires and stay up high so that way I can see the thing that I'm seeing is myself the my thoughts catching myself so with the made up mind and the family the father and the mother that I have it honestly makes it really easy and I don't desire to participate in those things so it makes it really easy praise be to allah praise be to allah so i love th these four attributes and i love how you made the connection uh with these uh, attributes so my question to you is when how do you use mukmin right to how do a, a believer or yourself use the attribute of mukmin faith mm -hmm. to establish one truth, hak. Two, uh, kudus. Mm -hmm. Now I know you translated kudus, and it on here is like absolute purity and all that, which is great. That's fine, alhamdulillah. But it also means to be sacred, right? Right. So when you look at that term sacred, right? Because sometimes 
And this is how that's what we can grasp. But I ain't pure, but I'm sacred. But Allah does say He loved those who purify themselves. Right. right? right. So we don't get into all that, just semantics, right? So, so how do you use Mukmin to establish Hudus, to the, establish Jabbar, and to establish Hawk? How does one use faith to do that? That's a great question. Um, the way that when you was talking, the, a thought that came to mind is putting a dirty glass next to the clean, clean glass by being the example. So using your faith will ultimately wrap around all three of the attributes that you just mentioned, just by striving, just by stepping out and trying what you believe, it will tie in the other three attributes. Hopefully that makes sense, but that's what came to mind when you were saying that. Um, yeah, that's, that's what I have for that one. Yeah, because there, there's a, that's okay. There's, there's, there's a direct correlation, you mm -hmm. know, because as a man thinketh in his heart, right. so is he. You know, so I love how you put the idea of having thoughts that are high. Yes, sir. You know, and, and trying to, and striving, I'm not going to say trying, but striving every day to stay there. Right. Right. And that's all different from all of us. Right. Of course, there's some basic basis. Right. Like prayer, fasting, charity, the pillars of Islam. Right. Right. So, Sadia, come on, jump in this conversation, right? I have something else to add, actually. Please go right ahead. When you was talking, it reminded me of one sister, Ava said, may Allah be pleased with her. I'm not quoting her exactly, but it's in one of her books. And she was saying the more that we live the teachings, the more we'll want to do it. Yes. So it is uh, it's the same thing in reverse. The more you stop coming to the mosque, guess what? You're going to probably not come back because you're, you're altering your lifestyle. So the more that we engage in our faith, the more that we in all areas of our life, try to actively apply these attributes in our life, guess what? The more we're going to do it. And I know sometimes we may think I'm too tired to do this. I can't do it. But you'll find that when you do it, you actually have more energy than what you started from in the beginning. So actually just honestly, just doing it. Like the most honorable Elijah Muhammad said, when you're tired, work, when you're sick, like work, just work. Because when you work, you're going with the right spirit, the right mindset, the right attitude, you're going to want to keep doing it. And you're going to be even more attractive to the people that we're striving to help. So I had to add that part. Praise be to Allah. And, and before you leave, um, can you give us, because you're part of the I Deny campaign, can you tell us what the I Deny campaign is? And, uh, you know, apply the um, attributes as you speak about the I Deny campaign, because I see it all, all of the attributes connected to the I Deny campaign. Yes, ma'am. So... Like you mentioned, you kind of touched on it in the beginning that it, it originally started after the Reflecting Farrakhan Challenge. I believe it was in 2021. It was when we had Savior's Day virtually. And the minister was very pleased with that particular workshop. And he compelled us. That's one of the attributes right there. He compelled us to, to start something that will inspire and make women happy to guard their chastity with joy and not just like, oh, you know, he, he wanted that. He wanted us to find joy in guarding our chastity and being ourselves. So like you said, all those um, attributes, they tie in there very well with what the first one being with faith. You have to have faith to honestly stand strong in this world. Everything is opposing a lot of forces, a lot of compelling forces, but you have to have your faith in there. And from there, from that faith will spring forth your purity because you're striving. So hold on. I know it's another one. <laughs> I know it's uh, faith and then- The sacredness of the woman. Yes. Okay. Yes. The sacredness of the woman actually guarding yourself. And it all starts like Brother Eileen was saying in the mind, like you can hear all of these things, but you have to believe it in order for you to actually take on those actions in your life. You have to know why you're covering your hair. You have to know why your body is sacred. And so from that, that's faith. It, it From that, in the end of result, you have great security and- it, and also get out of the mindset of thinking that we're covering just for the man, because I've encountered that too. They'll think, oh my God, like we're covering because of the man can't control himself. No, we're covering because we're showing God that we love our body. We love ourselves. This has nothing to do with the man. He benefits from us being ourselves, but the world flips it. And at the end of the day, if you strive to be in obedience to God, you will exude all those attributes. It comes naturally without you having to think about it. You're actually doing it, so Excellent. I hope that hopefully that answers the question. Excellent, beautiful, beautiful. And and I like to say this, and 
family, it's not just about virtuous women, but we want pious men as well, right? Right. With virtue as well. That's yeah. right. Yes, ma'am. All right. Well, praise be to Allah. Thank you, Sister Amira. Beautiful presentation as always. Excellent representation of mm -hmm. the mighty, mighty Vanguard, the MGT, Waxahachie, the Nation of Islam. <laughs> Your family all up in all the chat box. All of that. <laughs> praise be to Allah. It's phenomenal. And we, we thank your parents. Yes, ma'am. We got to take a picture, mm -hmm. by the way. I don't Hassan know. Kadri and Kadir, <laughs> everybody just throwing their claps up. Praise be to Allah. Praise Sister, they go Allah. right ahead. No. So thank you, sis. Um, inshallah, season four next year. Praise be to Allah. We're going to claim yes, it. Inshallah. So family, praise be to Allah for this episode 14. Tomorrow, episode 15, we will have our dear sister, sister Fatima Akila Muhammad from Mosque number one in Detroit. Praise be to Allah. If you enjoyed today's presentation, you can listen to it again or any other presentations um, that you haven't heard or want to rehear, you can go to YouTube at 99 to 1, the most beautiful names, Facebook at Moss45. You can follow us on Facebook and Instagram at 99TMBM. Make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube. And also now streaming anywhere you listen to podcasts. Like we said, we everywhere, y'all. So we on Podbeam, which is where Umar Reflects is, with Apple Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts, Praise be to Allah. And we're also a nonprofit organization, a 5013C. So we ask you to um, bless this organization by donating. Um, you can either do it through Cash App or through, through Zelle. Just open up your phone, your camera, point it at the QR code. A link will come up. Press that link and the donation screen will come as well. But if you don't can't do that, then just go to Cash App, put in uh, dollar sign 99 to 1. And on Zelle, put the email address 99tmbn at gmail.com. And we thank you in advance. And you can get your Ramadan 2024 Quranic Reading Journal and Historical Digest. Order it now at shop.researchminister.com to purchase yours. This book has been compiled by our dear beloved brother, student minister, brother Demetric Muhammad. He's done it for the past four to five years. It's not only is it a journal, but it's also nation history. And a lot of us don't know our nation history. And so this is an excellent companion for our Ramadan journal. Praise be to Allah. And tomorrow, no, in a minute, in a few minutes, right? Mm -hmm. Praise be to Allah. I got I have to go. <laughs> right. Closing the gap. Y'all, we I know if, if y'all want to continue all the way to Iftar, closing the gap, the purpose and the principles of Ramadan at 6 p.m., 7 p.m. Eastern time with our dear beloved brother, student minister, Abdul Alim Ansar Muhammad. And you can watch on YouTube, Facebook, um, YouTube and Facebook, and go to Research Minister Closing the Gap broadcast. All right, so praise be to Allah. So as we end, I'd like to close out with the words of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. He says, our... He says, it is reported to have said, cultivate within yourselves the attribute of Allah God. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan stated, if you run down all of the attributes and characteristics of God, these are also the attributes of human beings who are crafted by the creator. Praise be to Allah. Allah. Sister Mira, come on back in. Come on back on the camera. Did you leave us, Sister Mira? Okay, okay there we she go. go. Bring her back up. Spotlighter, spotlighter. There we go. All right. This is how You know how we close. Go ahead, Sister Dear. A crazy to so we'll close out with assalamu alaikum and ramadan mubarak i gotta get my hands in closer <laughs> we see your hands <laughs>he is the benevolent, the giving and merciful ease. So indescribable, his love is irreversible. Word undeniable, lyrically untriable, ultimately viable, eternally suppliable. Maybe inconceivable, but beautifully believable. The true reality, there's no similarity. Gave us more than charity, peace and prosperity. Why did we never care to see it? We can keep its clarity. The Almighty, the Father, metaphorically, but in the history, they tried to make his word a mystery. Gave him mortality, anthropomorphic battle. 
jealousy Say he's got a seed They can never bring the proof to me And honestly, the greatest, the best Beyond time and space, beyond matter and flesh Yes, he's uncomparable Yet his parables infinitely listed Pictures couldn't give a good description The pictures missing But he created all the living in every dimension And he inspired what I'm given The giver of wisdom, devoid of any needs Anything that he wants All he has to say is be Cause he's the untouchable Infinitely trustable His plan unstoppable Power untoppable The reliable Undeniable Greater than the physical Master of the mystical The master of the world The fashioner of seas